How did sexual reproduction get started? This is a huge problem for evolution because for some things we can say, all right, they had millions of years. But when it comes to organisms sexually reproducing, you don't have millions of years. You have the lifetime of that creature for that creature to develop a fully functioning reproductive system and find a mate that has a complementary reproductive, fully formed reproductive system. And the reproductive systems that we observe in organisms are incredibly complex. These aren't the kind of things that just spontaneously form. We don't observe reproductive systems spontaneously forming. So how does evolution explain this? Well, it doesn't at all. And if you do a search right now and you start looking for research done on this, you're going to find articles about, you know, possibilities, speculative stories, and you're going to find ideas about why reproduction was sexual reproduction was beneficial, but how it happened nobody has a clue. So if you go on popular media, you'll find a lot of attempts to explain the evolution of sexual reproduction. But what they usually end up doing is just diverting your attention away from the fact that we have absolutely no idea how it happened. Take a look at this clip that's titled The Evolution of Animal Genitalia. The penis of a chicken flea, for example, looks nothing like a pipette more like an exploded grandfather clock. And the vagina of a feather-winged beetle resembles something you'd find in a Dr. Seuss book. Throughout the animal kingdom, genitalia are very complex things, much more complicated than seems necessary for what they're meant to do. That's because genitalia do more than just deposit and receive sperm. Just describing unique features in reproductive systems doesn't tell me a single thing about evolution. And in fact, it only supplies evidence that these things could not have possibly evolved. They're complex structures and they're, there's such a great variety. We see similarly unbelievable genitalia in insects, mammals, reptiles, fish, spiders, and even snails. Apparently, no organs evolve faster and into more variable shapes than those involved in procreation. So, genitalia differs so much, not just to fascinate us, but because in every species, they're the result of a furious evolutionary tango of sex that has been going on for millions of years. I had high hopes with the title of this video, but for five minutes, all they did was talk about the amazing and unique structures that are in various reproductive systems of animals. So, so sexual reproduction is not a simple matter. But this video says that, hey, we can tell you the history of how and why sex evolved. Now, we don't know which living thing was the very first to arrive at the totally revolutionary process that is sexual reproduction, but we can follow the history of how and why sex became a thing. Okay, first, let's talk about the time before there ever was sex on Earth. Between two billion and two and a half billion years ago, the planet was home to simple, single-celled organisms like bacteria and archaea, and their main mode of reproduction was, and still is, to basically clone themselves. But sexual reproduction in the strictest sense, where offspring get an equal share of two parents' DNA, that didn't show up until well into the Proterozoic Eon. This whole process probably took a lot of evolutionary time to master. You don't have a lot of evolutionary time for a reproductive system to develop. You have the life of that organism, and that's it. If that organism doesn't reproduce, it doesn't survive the next generation in order to evolve. And that organism also needs a mate with a different reproductive system. And it may or may not have been perfected by Lika's time. But like I said, we don't really know what Lika was. So what's the earliest evidence for sex? Well, we do have some pretty old fossils of eukaryotes, including red algae that are about 1.6 billion years old. But red algae reproduce by using tiny spores, and we haven't detected any direct evidence of those in fossils of that age. And the oldest fossil we have that's interpreted as direct evidence of sex is of an animal. Actually, 
many animals. They're known as Phoenicia and they're- Finding an organism in the fossil record that sexually reproduced only tells me that that organism sexually reproduced. Finding many organisms in the fossil record that sexually reproduce doesn't tell us anything about how sexual reproduction evolved or if it could have evolved. So that is what's going on in popular media. They're presenting the idea and assuming that this evolved, but supplying no evidence for it. Oh, well, surely since they're proclaiming that it happened, there must be some scientific support for it. Well, let's look at a scientific article on this topic. Look at this journal article from 2012. The title is The Evolutionary Success of Sex. The first line says, sexual reproduction remains a major puzzle for biologists. They don't know how or why it evolved. Wait a minute, why don't we start by not assuming that it happened? Why should we assume that it happened? Something that we have no scientific evidence to support. Why are we automatically assuming that it did happen? But let's go on. Here it says, however, uncovering the evolutionary forces that produced and maintained this widespread characteristic of life has proven difficult, leading one evolutionary biologist to refer to understanding sex as the queen of problems in evolutionary biology. So this isn't just a problem. Some people are recognizing it as the biggest of problems, and they should because how can you get a reproductive system to form in one lifetime? That totally defies what has supposedly happened with evolution. Um, look what this says. Success in e evolutionary terms is ultimately judged by an individual's success in passing genes to future generations. The simple problem with sex from an evolutionary perspective is that it is extremely, an extremely inefficient way of achieving this end. So this guy's saying the main problem for developing sexual reproduction is that sexual reproduction is an inefficient way of reproducing. So he's looking for ways in which it would make sexual reproduction, the benefits outweigh the problems. And so, and, and many researchers have said, well, the, the benefits of sexual reproduction is that it produces variability. And yes, that is a benefit. But what is astounding to me is that the inefficiency of sexual reproduction is considered the big problem with it. How about the fact that Reproduction is an incredibly complex process and you need so many parts involved and you need two uh, species that are compatible to evolve at the same time and you need that to happen repeatedly with all the variety of types of sexual reproduction that we see on Earth. It's absolutely fantastic and that's not even addressed here in this article or in any of the uh, articles that I looked at. So um, it's a glaring problem that's over, often overlooked. Unfortunately, the unique origin of sex coupled with the fact that it occurred in the distant past under selective conditions about which we can only guess and which might have changed dramatically since makes testing theories for the evolutionary origins of sex extremely problematic. So this is a full admission in a scientific journal that we cannot test this. So for those who want to say, I believe in evolution because it's scientific. What is science? Science is when we observe things and test things and we are able to show by direct evidence that something is true. So should this be something that we assume is scientifically true? That is not a scientific way of thinking. 
Now look at this admission. Ultimately, we might be limited to plausible stories and might never have a conclusive answer to why sex evolved in the first place. Might be limited to plausible stories. How about implausible stories? And unfortunately, that is what fills the popular media and even sometimes the scientific journals is implausible stories about how evolution occurred. Stories are not science. You need more than to tell a good story in order to proclaim something as a scientific fact. So I hope that this is a wake up call. If you believe in evolution right now, think about it. How did reproduction happen? There was no millions of years to make it happen. And to happen spontaneously in a moment or in a lifetime, is that a plausible story? Thanks for watching. And if you hated this video, be sure to give it a dislike and tell me why you hated it in the comments section. Thanks. And if you liked it, please subscribe to my channel.